Let's fill out a 2024 electoral college map considering the 2020 presidential election results in every state, adjusted for how much of the vote independent candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is currently taking away from the likely Democratic nominee President Joe Biden and the likely Republican nominee former President Donald Trump. My name is Ryan Guest, Elections Data Fellow here at DDHQ. Please make sure to subscribe to our channel down below for more 2024 election analysis videos. I hope you enjoy this one. As of recording this video, Donald Trump currently leads Joe Biden in Decision Desk HQ slash The Hills 2024 national head-to-head -head polling average by 2.7%, based on 563 polls. The Republican has led in this average since last September. With that being said though, it would be foolish to completely ignore the candidacy of independent RFK Jr. The son of Bobby Kennedy and nephew of JFK who was polling at a historically high rate since dropping out of the Democratic primary to run as an independent candidate in October of 2023. Today, he's polling at an average of 8.3% across 75 polls included in Decision Desk HQ and the Hill's three-way national average. That is around the lowest it has been since he launched his independent bid, down from as high as 15 to 20%. Still though, 8.3% is nothing to scoff at. This would be the highest share of the vote for a non-major party presidential candidate since Ross Perot's bid in 1996. Third party and independent candidates have averaged less than 3% of the nationwide vote in the six elections since, with the highest percentage coming in the 2016 election between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton at 6.1%. Now, these polling numbers for RFK Jr. can largely be attributed to the unpopularity of the two likely major party candidates. Joe Biden is looked on favorably by less than 43% of American voters, according to our average of 285 polls, while Donald Trump has a favorability rating of just 46%, according to 268 polls. And so, unless those numbers change dramatically over the coming months, unlikely as you see here they have held very steady over the last year, it does seem reasonable to think that a Biden versus Trump rematch would at least produce a third party vote share similar to 2016, the only other time in the 21st century in which a majority of voters held unfavorable opinions of both candidates. Also, interestingly, the only other presidential race since 1996 that has produced a third-party vote share above 2% was 2000, 3.8% in that election to be exact, and I don't think I need to remind Democrats what the 2000 and 2016 elections have in common. Perhaps that is why the panic over third-party candidates does seem to be more concentrated among Democrats than Republicans at this point. And that brings me to the topic of today's video. We're going to dissect exactly which presidential candidate should be more concerned with RFK Jr.'s polling numbers at this point in time based on the implications on a 2024 presidential election map. To do that, we will be taking the 2020 election margins in every state, which you can see right now on this electoral map, and adjusting those margins in every state based on how much of the vote RFK Jr. is currently taking away from Biden and Trump. For your reference, the margin ratings on this map are classified as follows. Safe or solid states denoted with the darkest shade of red or blue cover states decided by more than 12 percentage points in either direction in 2020. Likely states colored in the second darkest shades were decided by margins between 7 to 12 percentage points. This includes Alaska, New Mexico, Iowa, Minnesota, Ohio, Virginia, New Hampshire, and Maine's second congressional district. Lean states, meanwhile, were decided by 2 to 7 points. Those are denoted with the second lightest shade of red or blue, including Nevada, Texas, Florida, Michigan, and Nebraska's second district. Finally, tilt states, the lightest shades, were won by less than two points by either candidate, Arizona, Georgia, 
North Carolina, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. Now the methodology for how I will be adjusting these results is pretty simple. As we saw at the beginning of this video, Donald Trump currently leads Joe Biden by 2.7% in our polling average. He holds 44.4% support on average, Joe Biden holds 41.7%. Those numbers represent each candidate's supposed share of the two-party head-to-head vote in this polling average. When looking at the average including RFK Jr., Trump's margin of lead increases to 4.1%, but his vote share drops down to 41.7%, down 2.7 points from his two-way race average support. Biden's vote share also drops, but by an even larger margin, down to 37.6%, a 4.1% decrease from his two-way share. Based on this data, we can currently estimate that RFK Jr. is drawing 2.7% of Trump supporters out of his camp, and pulling 4.1% of support from Joe Biden. Obviously, that is a very rough estimate, but it is what the data is telling us right now. And so using this data, let's go through each of the competitive, non-safe or solid states for both candidates and adjust their 2020 vote shares accordingly. Before I get started on that though, one more critical caveat to this analysis is ballot access. As an independent candidate, Kennedy is not guaranteed a spot on any state's ballot, meaning that volunteers must collect signatures from the general public on his behalf. This process is not only painstaking due to the unique minimum signature requirements and specific timeframes set by each state, but also very costly. Kennedy does have a super PAC working to get him on the ballot in as many states as possible, but so far he has only managed to secure ballot access in just one state, Utah. Given these hurdles, there are reports that Kennedy is considering an alliance with the Libertarian Party, which could potentially provide him with ballot access in every state, but that remains to be seen. And so with that said, let's begin the state-by-state -state analysis. Starting in Nevada, Biden garnered 50.1% of the vote in 2020 to Donald Trump's 47.7%. And so if we decrease Biden's vote share by 4.1%, it would drop down to 46%, exactly. Likewise, decreasing Trump's share by 2.7%, his vote percentage in Nevada becomes 45%, also on the dot. That means that Biden would still carry the state in this hypothetical scenario, but his margin of lead drops from 2.4% to just 1% shifting Nevada from the lean Democrat category into tilt Democrat range. Now that you hopefully understand how this is going to work, let's go through each of these states in more rapid fire. Just to the southeast of Nevada, we have Arizona. Biden's margin of lead was 0.3% in 2020, flipping Arizona into the Democratic column for the first time since 1996. The adjusted vote based on RFK's effects pulls Biden down to 45.3% from 49.4%, below Trump's adjusted vote share of 46.4%, which came down from 49.1%, so Arizona flips from tilt Democrat to tilt Republican. New Mexico and Alaska, meanwhile, keep their ratings as likely Democrat and likely Republican. The margin shifts in these two states are not strong enough to pull them out of these categories. So let's head to Texas instead. Biden received 46.5% of the vote there in 2020, while Trump got 52.1%. Although it was considered a vulnerable state for Trump by some pollsters and experts, as well as a potential upset victory for Biden due to its recent demographic trends, Trump held Texas with roughly the same percentage he carried it with in 2016. Biden did improve on Hillary Clinton's 2016 vote share by more than three points, giving him the largest percentage in the state by a Democratic presidential candidate since 1976. And Trump's 5.6 point margin of victory was also the narrowest for a Republican since 1996. In this scenario though, decreasing Biden's share by 4.1% gives him 42.4%, and decreasing Trump's share by 2.7% leaves him with 49.4%. 
As a result, Trump's lead increases from 5.6% to 7% exactly, just barely eclipsing the threshold to become a likely Republican state on this map. Nebraska's second district and Iowa remain in the lean Democrat and likely Republican categories. So let's look at Minnesota. Biden received 52.4% of the vote there in 2020, while Trump got 45.3%. Biden's win marked the 12th consecutive Democratic presidential victory in the state, their longest active streak in the country. Minnesota has not voted for a Republican for president since 1972. Decreasing Biden's share gives him 48.3%, and decreasing Trump's gives him 42.6%. So Biden does still lead, but by a narrower margin of 5.7%, shifting Minnesota into the lean Democrat category. And moving just over to Wisconsin, Biden narrowly carried the Badger state in 2020 by a 0.7 point margin, with 49.5% to Trump's 48.8%. Decreasing Biden's share by 4.1% gives him 45.4%, and by decreasing Trump's share by 2.7% to 46.1%, Wisconsin flips into the tilt Republican category. The margin here flips almost inversely from Biden plus 0.7 to Trump plus 0.7. Now let's consider Michigan. Biden's lead narrows from 2.8% based on these adjustments to just 1.4%, shifting Michigan from lean Democrat to tilt Democrat. Ohio remains likely Republican, so the next state is Pennsylvania. Biden got exactly half of the vote in the Keystone State in 2020 at 50%, while Trump got 48.8%. So decreasing Biden's share by 4.1% gives him 45.9%, and decreasing Trump's share by 2.7% gives him 46.1%. That's a 0.2% difference in vote share now that favors Donald Trump, so flipping Pennsylvania. Up in New Hampshire, Biden's lead narrows from 7.3% to just 5.9% based on the RFK effect, so that shifts New Hampshire from a likely Democrat to lean Democrat state. Maine's statewide contest and the competitive race in its second district remain likely Democrat and likely Republican, respectively, as does the Commonwealth of Virginia. 13 electoral votes remain in the Biden camp there. The next state is North Carolina. Biden lost with 48.6% of the vote in 2020, while Trump won for a second consecutive election in the Tar Heel state with 49.9%. And so based on that Trump increase via the RFK effect, Biden's deficit increases from 1.4% to 2.7%, shifting North Carolina into the lean Republican column from tilt Republican. Moving on to Georgia, Biden broke through in this historically conservative state in 2020 by 0.2%, representing his narrowest margin of victory in any state in that election decreasing Biden's share by 4.1%, as we have in every state, that gives him 45.4%, and decreasing Trump's share by 2.7% gives him 46.5%. So as was the case in Arizona, an equally narrow Biden win, Georgia flips from tilt Democrat to tilt Republican, at Trump plus 1.1. Finally, in Florida, it remains a lean Republican state. From 3.4% to 4.8%, that margin is still in between 2 to 7 points. Alrighty, that wraps up these adjustments. Taking a look at the updated electoral college count in the race to 270, Donald Trump would be elected president in this scenario with 291 electoral votes to Joe Biden's 247. Out of the key swing states, Trump would flip Arizona, Georgia, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin back into his column, while Biden would hold on to Michigan and Nevada. That is all though for this Decision Desk HQ video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to click that like button down below if you did indeed like it, and subscribe to the channel as well if you have not already. Also check out more content from our channel here, and we'll catch you next time.